I am glad you found your way in here, for I am sure there is much that will interest you. So, what is an inventory? We all know the basic idea behind an inventory system. And, you know, you have your little menu, and you're going to have a bunch of items, and you can drag them around, you can use them, some items stack, and all that fun stuff. But what's the actual logic behind what's happening here? So we're going to go through that real quick today, just a very simple example of the pattern behind this that you're going to have in most games. So first, the big problem some people have is they view this as a single thing. They view the item in the item slot as one object, when in reality, you're going to want to have an item slot, which is going to make up your inventory. It's actually going to be an inventory of item slots, and each item slot is going to have a reference to an item and then a quantity to how many items are in the slot. So you can see real quick in my example here, uh, we've created an item type, and I just gave it a few variables, just give it a name, description, and a stack limit. And these are the default variables here. I also have the actual creatine item, which inherits from our item type that we just defined above. And we're going to override the name, the description, and the stack limit. So it's all set for our creatine. We can now stack three creatine in a single item slot. And then we have the actual item slot, which is just going to be a couple of variables. We're going to have the stored item, which is of the item type. And then we're going to have a quantity for how many items are going to be allowed in the slot. So when we make our actual inventory, our inventory is really just a list of the item slots. That's, that's all that's happening here, is just a list of item slots becomes our inventory. And I just made a quick little loop here for us to make it easy so when a new mob logs in, we're going to loop through several times and we're going to add a new item slot to our inventory list. So now our inventory is just going to have a bunch of item slots listed in here. That's all that is. Um, and before we go any further, let's, so now let's look at the game and just to see what's happening with our new inventory system. And then we'll break down the code. So we'll check our inventory and you'll see it's empty right now. We'll admin give item. And you'll see it'll list all the items in the game, which we only have creatine at the moment. We'll hit okay. And it says added one creatine to a new slot. So we'll check our inventory and you'll see we now have one creatine in the slot. If we were to give ourselves another item, you'll see it's added to an existing slot, and it now shows our first item slot shows two creatine. And that's the sort of logic I was talking about up here. We have our item slot, which is this first slot right here, and the stored item is creatine, and the quantity that is in this item slot is now two. And since we have it set to a stack limit of three for creatine, we can give ourselves one more item. And you'll see it was added to an existing slot, and we check again, and we're at creatine three. So if we were to now consume creatine and check our inventory again, you'll see it removed one creatine from our slot. What we can do is if we come up here and we purchase creatine, You'll see it alternates between new slot and existing slot and we'll check our inventory and you'll see we have a few slots that are capped at three and every time we reach the cap it goes to a new slot and we'll just keep doing that until oh we're out of inventory space so we check and you can see we have five inventory slots all capped out at three creatine we can no longer hold more items until we consume the creatine so let's break down the actual code here. So first, real simple, our check inventory verb. All we're doing is saying for every item slot in our inventory, we're going to reference the item slot as I. We're just saying if the item slot has a stored item, just output to the user, to the source, uh, the name of the item and the quantity of the item. And that's all. And we're going to use the same sort of logic for a lot of the uh, code below. It's actually very simple. 
So our admin give item, all we're doing is I create a list of possible choices. Right now we only have item creatine. And we give them a choice to pop up. And they get to pick the item, which is only creatine. And we call our give item function and pass in the choice, which is going to be item creatine. So this is the same as if I did this. Except we're just making it a little easier by using the choice. So let's break down the actual give item function. So we come in here, and this is for a mob, and we're gonna pass in an item, and we're gonna reference the item as a variable named item to give. So first, we make sure that there is in fact an item that we've passed in when calling this. And if there is, we're gonna make a new variable named item added, and this is just to see if the item has been successfully added to one of our inventory slots. So we know by default, no, it has not been added yet. So we're gonna come down here and we're gonna check our existing stacks and see if there is any creatine that already exists that is not at three, it's not at our cap. So that's the logic jumping through here. We're just saying, hey, for every item slot in our inventory, if the item slot has a stored item, and the stored items type is the same as the item that we're passing in to the give item function and the item slots quantity is less than the stored item stack limit which means if the item slots quantity is less than three because we know our stored item is going to be creatine and the stack limit of creatine is three so if all of this is true, then we're going to add one quantity to our item slot and we're going to change our new temporary variable to true because we know we successfully added it. We're going to output a message and we're going to return true. And that means the code below will not run because we successfully added an item. There's no need to do anything else. However, if there is no existing stacks to add to, our item added is still gonna be false. So we're gonna reach this point of our code. And so we're gonna just check. Again, we're gonna go through our item slots in our inventory. And we're gonna say, if the item slot does not have a stored item, if it's null, that means we know it's an empty item slot. So we're going to just set the stored item of the item slot to a new instance of the item we've passed in, which is item creatine. So we're going to say stored item is now a new item creatine. And then we're going to say the item slots quantity is one because we've only added one. And we know we've added an item to our inventory. So this becomes true. Output our message and return true. Now, if none of this ran, that means our inventory is full. We didn't have an existing slot to add to and we didn't have a free slot to add to. So we made it all the way down here. And we know this variable is still false. So let's output a message and say we're out of inventory space and we're going to return false. And that's kind of all you need to add an item to your inventory. And this way you won't go over your limit. Your items will always go into existing stacks and it keeps it clean. So last, all we have is how to actually use the item. And this is going to be identical to give it an item, we're just looping through our item slots and checking a few variables. So we'll come down to use item. And again, we're gonna say, all right, for every item slot in our inventory, we need to check if the stored item in the item slot, if we have a stored item, and the type of our stored item is the item we're trying to use, which is item creatine, and the quantity of the item slot is greater than zero, meaning there's at least one item in the slot. Now we can remove one quantity from the slot. We'll output a little message to say, hey, we use the item. So what we need to do now is we've successfully used an item, but now we need to do a couple of extra checks here. So first, we're going to check if the item we used, right here, if the type of the stored item is item creatine. We know the item we used was creatine. So we need to specifically give 20 stamina to the player 
reset the cooldown for creatine, and output a message. And this could be repeated for other items, but again, this is a very simple example of the logic behind an inventory system. So, And then finally, we do another check here. Since we used one item, we need to check, hey, is the quantity zero? If it is, we need to set the stored item to null. That means... We use the item, you know, there's one item left in the slot, we used it, it's now zero, which means there's no longer an item there. So remove the item from our item slot. Then after all this is done, uh, whether or not we remove the item or it was a creatine, as long as we used an actual item, we return true to say, yes, we used an item. Now, if none of this is true, and we're not able to return true here, then we get down here, and it just says, hey, you don't have any items in your inventory, return false. So we know when we call this function, if it returns true, we successfully use the item. If it returns false, we were unable to. And that is sort of the entire logic behind the system. You just need to remember the inventory has a list of item slots, and the item slots are what makes up your inventory. The items are totally separate. The inventory slot will just reference the item and the quantity and any other variables you need, but we just kept it very simple for now. Um, if you look through the repo, you'll see I just commented out some of the old code so you can still see it here. Uh, for example, using creatine, all we have to do now is that we had a, several lines here before. All we have to do is call our custom function and pass in item creatine when we consume creatine. There's a couple other spots in the code where I changed that and it all runs just fine. Come into the game and you can see again, inventory is clear. We'll add our creatine. We'll come up to the vending machine. We'll purchase some creatine. And there we go. And that's the basic concept behind an inventory system. We'll try to expand more on this in future videos. Maybe we'll do an actual on-screen UI, but the logic behind the on-screen UI Will be exactly what we've done here. The only difference is we'll be drawing an image on the screen to represent the values that have been set up over here. So hope you liked it and we'll see you guys next time.